Well, here we are, another week of indoor football, arena football. It is finished, and, well, it's been quite a while. You know, it's been about two weeks. Um, there was an issue of where I'm living yet. The issue has now been resolved. It was not me personally. It was with some other people that live here. Unfortunately, things, you know, kind of got out of hand. And thus, I wasn't able to post for two weeks. So it's not like it's not like YouTube did anything. It, it was some special circumstances. It is about 90-something degrees outside if you're in Texas right now. So make sure you're inside. Make sure you're safe. If you're going out, make sure you don't go out in unless it's the morning or unless it's late, which I'm going to do. It's about 7 o'clock right now. It'll be about time for me to go on out and see what I can do at 7 o'clock at night. Um, so yeah, it's been two weeks. So what happened in these past two weeks? Well, a lot of things happened to the NAL. And you see, you see the standings, you see this, wait, there's only six bullet points there. What happened? Well, there was the thing about Pete Porcelli, A.B. hired him, he got fired, Ben Bennett got fired, as well, Mo Leggett got hired as the head coach, but then you know, AB was like, "Oh yeah, let me get Terry Foster." But Terry Foster was like, "No, I'm 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 not gonna do all that. I'm gonna stay right here with Iowa." And then you know, the bye week for Albany happened. You know, because after the Albany Orlando game, in which you know, you know, Jonathan Bain got hurt, Danny Southwick got signed. People were mad at Kerry Starks. Devin Wilson's back. He's a shark again. That's good. That's good. But, I mean, you know, A.B. continued to say, you know, oh, we're going to – I'm going to play. The team got kicked out of a holiday end, and then the unthinkable happened. The Empire got kicked out of the NAL on June 15th. League fees were not paid despite several chances being given to do so. You know, the NAL does these on a monthly basis, even though it should be at the beginning of the season. But, you know, again, this this was a culmination of things that happened throughout the season for the Albany Empire. And things just got to a point where, you know, nobody can take this anymore. Fans can get their money, their season ticket money back. A revised schedule is in the works. We don't know when that will come out. I'm sure... The boys at Inside the Walls have more information on that. Um, even they're kind of in the dark on it. You know, they were in the, they were kind of in the dark on this as well. And you know, like this this was unexpected, completely out of nowhere. Um, like you know, MVP Arena apparently you know wants a team back in Albany. The NAL apparently wants a team back in Albany for next year. But I mean, this this is this. This has been a team, you know, watching the downfall of it was like a movie. And remember, A.B. got this team in the first place. He became the majority owner in the first place because Albany was not, you know, was not getting it done, you know, not getting it done in certain areas. And, you know, like this isn't this isn't the team that won the, the last Arena Bowl it had like 10,000 fans at the arena. No, this is a team that was drawing one-fifth of that at best. So the reach around, the, the you know, the reach around was was crazy to think that, you know, the, there's a passionate fan base there, but it's just, it's just not the same as it was. You know, I mean, there's a certain, certain fan that's very passionate. Follow them on Discord, follow them on Twitter. You know, been covering the situation in Albany very, very well. You know, and I mean, things just completely got out of hand. You know, was this Albany team supposed to play this year? Probably. They probably should. They probably, you know, could have played the whole year. But ultimately, you know, the money issues I think were a thing, <laughs> and I mean. AB did simply didn't even want to pay. I mean, the rest of the owners that backed out, could they even pay? 
that is one thing because I do remember, you know, us going back and forth, you know, about the conversation about Albany in the first place. Or at least I was looking, but the conversation was, would Albany even be able to play this year at first? The fact that they were able to get, you know, halfway through the season is crazy enough with A.B., you know. Had, had had it not, you know, been what it was with without A B, I, I don't know what I don't know how Albany would have been. You know, this team probably would have been winning games with the roster that they had and everything like that. But it, it again I, it, it was just it was just too much, you know, too much A B and thus the NAL said enough is enough. I don't blame them. The bad thing is, is that the NAL has to figure out the schedule again very, very quickly. Um, you know, most teams have 14 game schedule, but some teams play Albany twice. And now those teams, you know, don't get to play Albany twice. So you look at the standings and everything like that. It's still, it's still kind of eh right now. It's still kind of eh. So, you know, San Antonio, Jacksonville, Carolina in good position, Fayetteville stuck at 500, Orlando gaining, West Texas. They're West Texas. They're 2 and 7. You know, just they're almost there. They're almost there. We still have some time left as we're getting closer and closer to the month of July, which means we're getting closer and closer to the end of the season. So, you know. So the IFL, what about the IFL? Well, I don't have a lot to say right now about the IFL as far as my observations go. Like Arizona's resurgence has been fun. Frisco's defense, still not very good. Resilient, though. They clinched a playoff spot. That's good for the fighters. Quad City, they can't rely on EJ Hillier alone. They have to get some defense out there. As you can see, they got blown up by Iowa, which, I mean, the last time Iowa won a game, they also blew out Sioux Falls, I think, right? You look at the rest of the scores, I mean, again, Frisco struggling, San Diego still fighting, Arizona beating Duke City again, not a rivalry, stop it. Bay Area, you know, beat Vegas in a game in which, you know, Sneed is him, but the string cut out with like seven minutes to go. And Sioux Falls Tulsa was crazy. Tulsa decided to do four of the dumbest plays I've ever seen in my entire life, and Sioux Falls was able to escape. And, you know, things are pretty much the same. Pretty much the same as far as, you know, what in the world happened with all the playoffs and stuff like that. Like, it's still the same five teams in the East, and the West is still kind of a dogfight right now. So, you know, I think, I think Tucson's 6-6. Six and six. I think I might have messed it up, but it's all right. We'll fix that next week. We'll fix that next week. Uh, so, the CIF. Well, another talk of a merger. Steven Titus, he spoke about it on, I think it was Shady. I think Sam, I think my boy Sam Shady was talking with Steven. You know, Chris Siegfried, we went to the semifinal game in Billings. And, you know, CIF playoffs happened. They were, for the most part, pretty fun. The championship was a rematch for the third straight year between Omaha and Salina. So I am already 0 for 2 on picking champions this year because, remember, I picked Albany to win the championship in the NAL, and, well, they're kicked out of the league. Sioux City couldn't get past Billings. They lost, like, five straight to end the year. You know, Gillette faced Southwest Kansas in a dogfight, and then Omaha beat the brakes off of Billings. Salina barely got past Gillette in the semi, and then Omaha just too much. And they win their second championship. They finish the season at 12 and 0, unbeaten. They really decided to do this for a third straight year. Just, just you might as well pencil them in next year. So where does the CIF go from here? Well, after a season in which the Topeka Tropics were really the biggest talking point, you know, aside from the quality of the streams and everything being the same as they usually have been, you know. Um, CIF is going going up. They're going up places. They're going up to good things, I think. You know, I think they can bounce back, get themselves back on track, you know. 
Um, the Idaho Horsemen, they will host the AWFC Championship on July the 1st. Wenatchee lost to Oregon 44-40 on June the 10th. The Skyhawks, they have to beat the Desert Storm by 5 on the 24th, which is a Saturday to go to the AWFC Championship. Las Vegas Kings decided to duck, you know, Oregon on June 3rd. So they have to play the Idaho Warhawks instead. Wenatchee just couldn't play the Sid Steak Up. So another canceled home game for Wenatchee. But really the story here is these last two games between Wenatchee and Oregon. Again, the schedule just had to get pushed out all the way to July. At least the season will end on July 1st as predicted. As I said, it will end on July 1st. I just didn't think it was going to end with the championship on July 1st. We knew the regular season was supposed to end on July the 1st, but now the the season itself will end on July the 1st. So whoever gets to the AWC championship, we will have another champion being crowned as West Michigan. And Omaha have already been crowned as champs. In the AIFA, though, it's just nothing but Duck City, Capital City. They said, we're not playing Columbus. You know, they ducked another beating. Southern Steam, they decided to go out to Columbus. They get smacked 58-8 to on June the 2nd. The AIA says, no, nah, we're not broadcasting this game for some stupid reason. I'm, you know, the AIFA is notoriously bad with just about everything, and the only legitimate team can't even broadcast this game. I don't know why. The Dallas Falcons, they were like, hey, we, let's move on over to Sulphur Springs out in East Texas. A 1,500-seat arena in, in East Texas, in Sulphur Springs. I'm going to tell you right now, as a person who grew up in East Texas, or at least spent a lot of his childhood in East Texas, ain't nothing in East Texas. Please, not Sulphur Springs, please. Sulphur Springs doesn't deserve it, man. But it is fine. It is, it is what it is. It's great for the Dallas Falcons, for real, though. Uh, hopefully, they draw a good, decent crowd. You know, um, they get smacked by Columbus, of course, 62-20. to 20. And then the South Florida Thunder, they dumped the Peach State Cats. So the Peach State Cats said, we're going to schedule some team called the Cartersville Cardinals. They beat them 85 to nothing on June the 3rd. Now, Peach State apparently isn't even an AIFA team. But, hey, they were able to get this game against Columbus broadcast. And, you know, Peach State talked a lot of trash, but ultimately Columbus smacked them 80-8. to So we'll see what happens with Columbus as they continue to go forward. If they've been announcing some things. And we'll see what happens to the rest of the AFA. Will, will the rest of these teams even play games this year? It remains to be seen. It really does. With that, I'll see you all. On Tuesday, yeah, on Tuesday, to talk lacrosse. And then, you know, more of that. And then Saturday is the big one. It will be one of the best days of the year. It will be hot, but I will be able to be going to the Comerica Center out in Frisco. So I will see you all on Tuesday and then Saturday and then next Monday, you know, because Jacksonville had to have a home game on a Monday due to the UFC. Isn't that great? Isn't it fun? I think I think it was due to the yeah it is due to the UFC. Yeah. All right, I'm out of here. I'll see y'all later.